Hey, how's it going lads and ladies? Brad the Guitologist here. In today's video, we are going to use this digital microscope to figure out how nasty your guitar is. So, if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, stick around. First of all, you guys who follow the channel will notice behind me is a blank spot where my large TV was until uh, just actually just earlier this evening the thing has uh, messed up on me again so this is going to be a nice opportunity for us to also use the same microscope to fix the tv at the same time uh, you see down here i've already pulled one of the boards in preparation here's the board and here's the microscope we're going to unbox the microscope if you guys want to jump right to the part where we get the guitars and look at nasty shit on the guitar then uh, i'll put a timestamp down below so you can go check that out right away uh, but let's go ahead and open this microscope this has got a larger screen on it this comes Company reached out to me uh, and I'll put a link down in the description to where you can pick up one of these as well they reached out to me wanted to send me one of these it's an upgrade to the one that I already have and have been using for a while uh, I've actually got it mounted up here on this ring light as you can see here's the here's the microscope here uh, I have the ability to run out of this one uh, via uh, an HD cable uh, to a monitor if I want to, or I can just use the onboard. I think this is like a, I don't know, a three and a half or four inch screen. Uh, this one is supposedly a seven inch screen, so it's supposed to be a pretty good upgrade from this thing. So let's go ahead and uh, unbox this one and check it out. I've kind of been wanting to get to this for a little while and ha haven't had the time. But wow, look at the size of the screen on that. That is enormous by comparison. Wow, I, well, I don't know what I expected, but that is way bigger than I expected. So my hand barely fits across the thing. And on this one, <laughs> it's like half the size of my hand. So yeah, this is going to be quite the upgrade indeed. I had designs on possibly mounting this up here on this in the same way, but I might not be able to do that. Uh, you can see here, this has a base also that we can use. The one that I have up here also came with a similar base. Uh, really nicely machined bases that they include with these, I have to say. If the resolution on this is anything like this one right here, we're going to see some really interesting, really cool stuff. Some really microscopic worlds here today. Some of it can be quite scary. Uh, quite scary and quite gross. Okay, so we do get a 32 gigabyte uh, micro SD card with this, which is always nice when they provide you with an SD card for something. You don't get that a lot. This one has LEDs built into a ring light on the base. The other one that I have up here mounted does not have ring lights on the base. It's just a focusable lens. I am going to use the supplied base with this, so you'll get to see what... Uh, what it looks like here. Real estate on the bench is, is a pretty hot commodity. Um, so I don't like to have extra pieces of gear on the bench if I can keep from it. I would much rather, um, you know, get the thing up off the bench and suspend it in the air like I've got this other one. It does come with a power supply for charging. Ooh, one thing I could tell here is that this does not have the same kind of focus uh, mechanism. I guess the focus is here and not here like on my old one. Well, it does have a mechanical feel to it, so I think something is moving up and down inside of the shaft. It's an actual optical zoom. So anyway, this is a portable LCD microscope, um, model number G1200, 1200 times continuous amplification, 10 millimeters to infinity, yada, yada, yada. You, I guess you could read all that if you want to. It's an angle adjustable digital microscope that solves the problem of high reflections. I guess you can see there, you can cock it back at sort of an angle so that the light coming from the little ring light reflects in a different direction. Yeah, there they kind of demonstrate that, I suppose. Uh, plug in or built in extra lit ultra, excuse me, lithium battery. So it is portable. You can charge it and it's portable. Does it do video? Photo video. Okay, so it will do photo or video. I was worried about that. Uh, supports up to 128 gigs of micro SD flash. Okay, it's got a brightness regulator for the light. It doesn't claim that how much of the magnification here is is digital and how much of it is actually optical. So I'm a bit worried about it, but we'll set it up and we'll see. Let me get right back to you. Okay, so we've got a dimmer right here for the LED lights. Uh, we've got our 
flash SD and we've got our micro USB for charging pretty simple but this one seems honestly um, a little kitschier maybe is it would be my the word plasticky you know just light it's really light on on this portion which is what concerns me because this one uh, that I already have um, is a little heftier um, by feel it just feels substantial in your hands like there's actual you know mechanics and stuff going on inside of it and this one I'm um, I don't know if I have such high hopes for it at the, at the moment we'll see though the one thing I will say about these microscopes dude they're they're um, they're a really really cool thing that if, if you have kids you will spend a full day probably the first day you get one of these just going around the house and finding odd stuff to put up underneath here <laughs> seriously let's start out we'll look at one of these little fret erasers Let's go ahead and focus this in. Let's see how. Ooh. I can bring this way down as well. And already this one is not as smooth as the other base that I have. It's it's okay, but it's not. Oh, maybe if I loosen up the yeah, loosen up the screw. The, well, I don't know. This one's kind of clunky. It could really stand to be oiled. Yeah, you know, I can kind of already tell this one is not as good as the other one, I'm afraid. This is not very smooth. I don't like the way that this is behaving. I mean, the thing is, once you set it, like if, if I was working on electronics, for instance, let's, you know, that's a fret eraser. So you can see kind of the topography of that. But I want to start a recording. Hit the OK button. OK, so I'm recording. This is recording a video. I wonder if it takes audio. Probably not. Probably not. Let's go back. Let's go down further and see how close we can get. Um, yeah, this is this right here is really kind of it goes click, click, click. It go. It, it's not smooth at all. I mean, it'll work for like classroom use or something, um, but it just feels like this knob is really, it just feels really um, clunky, not very smooth at all. Not By comparison to this one, it is, it is worlds worse than my old one in terms of smoothness. Um, and I'll be honest with you too, I, what the hell is that? What is that? It's like a, some kind of bubble or something. See, I'm going to. Um, okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try to film this screen at the same time we're capturing with it, so you can kind of get a sense of how close I am to the object and all of that stuff. So maybe I can intersperse these things, and I probably should do this. Three, two, one, soup. There you go. I don't know if you're gonna be able to tell this, but this is. See, and it's like moving it around too. Like when I I'm I am zoomed in this far. Okay, so. That's pretty, it's a good picture, but the thing is, this is so clunky on the focus. It's like it's skipping gears or something, you know what I mean? It's, it's not, it's just not smooth enough. I, I love the screen. I like the fact that the screen is uh, as large as it is. That's really nice, but you know, you can see the grit and this, um, it's basically sandpaper. There's a hair or something. So yeah, kind of interesting. So that's an eraser. Let's go ahead and back this thing out a little bit so that we can get a uh, so we can get an electronics board up under here. All right. So what what failed on this board was this connector right here, and I kind of predicted that this connector might fail. <laughs> the TV's on, so it must have been a ground issue. Either that or it was a connection issue right there, like I, like I said it might be. But it, I don't know if you could see it or not, but it's just wiggling every which direction, and you're going to see it wiggle. Hang on, I'll put it underneath here, and you'll really see it wiggle. If you look closely right here, when I move it, you can see every single one of these pins is moving. <laughs> it's just, it's not in there really hardly at all. Look at that. Let's get, make sure it's nice and focused, best we can get it. You can even hear it kind of struggling to fall into focus there. 
First thing we need is some soldering flux. Hmm. I might have to go to a smaller tip or something here because this is not working out. So. No, stop bridging. So I realize it would have been much easier to switch to a conical tip or a small conical tip for my uh, soldering iron for this part. But, you know, I didn't want to wait for the thing to cool down. And I just uh, <laughs> it's one it's one of those things you're just going to have to suffer like I suffered. <laughs> so. The following Thursday. Anyway, so that's that's that right there. And uh, I think we're out. Ooh, did I miss one? I miss one right right there. I think that yep, yeah, sure did. Look at that. Sure did miss one. I can't get enough heat to the little pad. It's like it's the flux isn't really doing its job, is it? There we go. There we go. That's better. All right. So there's that board repaired, and I think uh, that should take care of the TV. Definitely not as smooth or as nice as my other one, that's for sure. Which is a bit of a shame, because I, I really like the this display on this. is fantastic. I love the display. Yeah, the focus mechanism is horrible by comparison. I think this model is cheaper than, than this other one, which, you know, the larger screen makes it attractive, but... The other one has a has an output, it has an HDMI output to it, so you could put it on a bigger screen. It's 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 a better unit. This is really more for classroom use, I'd say. Um, you know, this is something that you wouldn't mind too much um, to put in front of a uh, classroom full of kids, and you know, it's it's not going to be the end of the world if they screw it up, which they probably will. Now let's check out some uh, guitar nastiness. So I've mounted this thing up on my light fixture here, and this will allow us a little more freedom to be able to move it around. And we'll take a look at some micro images of the guitar fretboard. If nothing else, this may inspire you to clean your guitar for a change, you nasty bastards. <laughs> because look at all this. It's just every nook and cranny is full of tiny particles of skin and little hairs and God knows what and uh, to look at the guitar with the naked eye it looks fairly clean this is not a I mean I've seen much much I don't I never let my guitars get so bad that they're all gunked up on the you know between the frets like a lot of people do a lot of people you'll see lots of nastiness right up next to the frets especially and I, I can't stand that that I get OCD about that stuff so I don't ever let it get that bad, um, but I've played some guitars from people who had let them get that bad, and it's never a pleasant experience. What is that? Just waiting to see something crawling down here. How embarrassing would that be? Strings are always kind of a trip. Let's get it a little closer so we can see some strings up close. These are actually relatively new strings, and I have um, recently changed them and cleaned the fretboard, I believe, not that long ago. So this is, like I said, this is relatively this is relatively clean right now, but you can see all the little particles and things here and there. Let's get up. Let's get up on the guitar body. You're going to be able to see some really interesting things. See all the uh, scratches and the finish you typically don't see. Back a few feet here, uh, up in the nook and crannies. You see the edge of the fretboard right there. It's always a catch-all for some stuff. And oh, good lord! See what is all that? <laughs> I mean. The naked eye, you can tell that that area of the guitar is is dirty and needs to be 
you know, probably cleaned out at some point, but it's not like you don't see it as being filthy. Not like this. <laughs> this is, you know, this is, uh, it seems much worse under a microscope, put it that way. But look at all, you know, particles, probably particles of skin, I would guess. Look, ooh, look there inside of that screw hole, just a, con just a collection of filth down in there. Oh, well, this ought to be great right here by the uh, pickups. You can see all the skin particles and God knows what else down there. Of course, those are always a catch-all for gunk and debris of one kind or another. The cool thing about it being on a boom like this is I can kind of pull in and push out. Like if I want to go deeper down in there, I can push the thing down slightly and then pull it out if I want to come out, out here to the surface of the pickup, for instance. And you can just see the, the amount of filth pretty much everywhere, even on what I would consider a relatively clean guitar. But, you know, right down, especially if you're a finger picker, right down here where I do a lot of finger picking, I, you know, there's going to be a lot of skin and other debris that doesn't get wiped down quite as much anyway. Pretty fascinating, right? I can pull out and take a look at some strings. I wonder if uh, I wonder if the strings are actually more gross down here where I pick. I think these strings are uh, DR Veritas strings, and I think they're supposed to be coated um, in something. Oh, well, there's more loveliness in a screw hole right there. What the hell is that? That looks like that might be a piece of metal. It's made its way down there. Look at all the, just look at all the gunk. Just all the skin cells, the debris. Not what I would call pleasant. Look at that. That's a, um, it's one of the holes in the pickups. Right there, one of the, um, I guess it's a guide hole or, so, or of some kind. But you can see all the crap down in there. Bridges are always fun to look at. Should be nice and nasty down here. Actually, that's not that bad, is it? I mean, it's dirty, but it's not as bad as I would have thought. Well, that's kind of a cool shot you don't get to see very often, isn't it? <laughs> It's interesting to look at how deteriorated 
some of the hardware is. Look at that. This is a 2002, so this is, you know, almost a 20-year-old guitar. So you can see how much deterioration has taken place on that Allen key there, for instance. Pitting of the metal and so forth. You can see here. But where a microscope like this would really come in handy is if you're trying to ascertain whether or not there's some kind of burr, you know, if you have a lot of string breaks or, um, you know, something like that, uh, this might be very useful in determining, you know, if you have a burr or a sharp edge somewhere that you need to take care of. This will give you a really nice close look at things. I mean, I can get really, really right down on this and zoom in. And, you know, this is going to tell me if I've got a little problem area I might need to address. But what's cool is, you know, all these little hidden landscapes and, you know, like down in that screw hole right there. Look at all the nastiness down in it. Just like I said, you can really see the wear, the deterioration of the metals over time. And like I said, if you had a little burr or something there, you would be able to see that, you know, if it was rocking back and forth um, in that string slot, you'd probably be able to see some of that wear right there on the string itself and in the slot. But it, it really kind of gives you a different perspective on things. I mean, see all the nicks and scratches and sort of abuse that's gone on there uh, right there is usually a very weak part of most strings right there where the winding stops for whatever reason you know it seems like there's always a weakness there and strings often break right there but just an interesting uh, interesting look at a guitar you don't get to don't get a chance to see very often right one of the nastiest strings I ever looked at under my other microscope was a string that was probably it had to be 50 years old 50 to 60 years old possibly it had hadn't been taken off this mandolin in a long time and and you could really tell it that the string first of all the strings weren't really the type you would put on uh you know in modern day it was this this was certainly an older string anyway and uh it had been on there for a long time obviously so um so it was really nasty and and when when strings get so nasty uh that they're really you know they're filled up in in between all the gaps with just uh, gunk and nastiness and filth. You can really see it under these microscopes. And uh, you can see why intonation is also thrown off um, by strings that would have that much gunk in them. Because what you're doing basically is you're changing the gauge of the string. You're changing its mass. Um, and you ch when you change it unevenly, uh, up and down the fretboard, you're going to get intonation problems. And that's what uh, I've had one instance in the past where the intonation problem was so bad because of how old the strings were. It was a half a step off from uh, from the nut to the 12th fret. This is another thing that's uh, really useful. If you're doing uh, fret work and if you want to you know, again, maybe see if there's a burr on a fret or if you want to look at your the nut of the guitar and you want to see if um, the nut has been cut properly or, you know, if it's breaking strings at the nut or if one of your frets kind of feels messed up and or if you've done a fret job and you just want to get a, an idea of how good of a job you did on your fret work. Um, 
you know, this might be very useful. And right, you, right there, you can see some gunk right on the string right above that fret. See that gunk right there? Gunk has a tendency, for whatever reason, to kind of accumulate around the fret area, huh? But you can see, I mean, this fret's not perfect. I mean, this is polished to a degree, but it's, you know, you're never going to have perfection on your frets. But this will give you an idea of how perfect they are, how good of a fret job has been done. And if, like I said, if there's any problem areas, um, you know, that might be causing unwanted noises or unwanted wear in your strings. So, yeah, kind of a useful, fun thing to, uh, to look at. Uh, your guitar under a microscope. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, hit subscribe down below. And for now, we will see y'all later. Okay, so that did fix the problem with the TV. The TV is back up and running again.